All right, just want to do a little uh, book review today. Uh, this one is The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, <clears throat> cover is uh, obviously quite profound. Uh, <laughs> definitely leaves a mark. Um, the cover comes from a piece of artwork from Henry Fuseli called The Silence. Um, looks like he lived in the 18th century. I don't think it has any connection with the book. It just, um, whoever put together this Oxford World Classics <clears throat> book thought it would um, fit nicely, and it does. Uh, this is a Gothic novel. I didn't know this going into reading the book, but apparently it is the first gothic novel, which was really cool. I found that out reading the introduction, which um, I really like reading introductions to, to books, particularly this one. Um, one thing that bothers me sometimes about introductions is they will give away the plot, I think at least. And so sometimes I'll be reading the introduction and I'll stop reading it. I'll go ahead and read the book and then I'll read the introduction after just so I don't have anything spoiled. Um, I didn't get the sense that this one uh, gave anything really away from the story. And it did pr provide a lot of background information, mostly um, background information for the Gothic movement in general um, and how it kind of all got started, the history of it. And, how it's connected to the romantic movement um yeah i actually didn't realize how connected it was to actual goths like um ostrogoths visigoths like the germanic peoples that invaded uh rome sacked rome and kind of became the dominant force maybe i'm wrong about that um for the rest of european hi history i mean obviously they were um, Christianized, so they weren't like pagan. They, I don't think, were referred to anymore as Goths, but I mean, the Germanic peoples from Charlemagne to modern day, um, I, Rome never really um, took its preeminence again. <clears throat> All right, well, I am uh, kind of going off on a tangent, I'll get back to the to this book. So the Castle of Otranto, um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've read other um, gothic novels. Um, the Monk by Matthew Lewis was one of my favorite books, actually. Um, I didn't like this one quite as much, and I'll get into why. And then I've also read, uh, well, many, but but uh, recently uh, I also read uh, Vathic by William Beckford, and I much preferred this to Vathic or Vathic. I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what did I like and dislike about this book? First, um, I'll mention, well, yeah, before I actually get into the book, I want to say something. Horace Walpole, um, I learned also in the introduction that he was a member of parliament, which if I'm not mistaken, Matthew Lewis is a member of par was a member of par parliament and so was William Beckford. What is it with these um english members of parliament writing gothic uh, literature there's got to be some connection there because it's too much of a coincidence and, and I, they were all very young i believe when they wrote their major uh works the, their most famous works uh the monk vathic and the castle of otranto so very very strange in my opinion um yeah so about the book um in general it's quite short. I read it in one day, actually. Um, it, uh, it's about 100 pages. I think it's about exactly 100 pages. And um, although there's not like a lot of breaks in the pages, like for dialogue, it just kind of goes, it's just all, there's no breaks for dialogue. And there's barely paragraphs. I mean, <laughs> for instance, on the one I just flipped to, there isn't even a paragraph break. Um, there's only five chapters, but it, it's surprisingly not dense. Um, maybe it's just because 
it's a quite fascinating story. So it moves. Um, but yeah, I read it in one day, no, no problem. And um, <clears throat> it, it wasn't the most incredible story. Um, it's kind of a, a tragic story about um, a family. Uh, this, uh, this guy is marrying his son off to a princess. It takes place, um, sorry about that, in the 14th century in Italy. His family lives in a castle. Um, and they are marrying off their son to this princess. The, this son is the only heir to, to this prince. Yeah, I, he, I guess you would call him a prince. His name is Manfred. And his son dies on the first page. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil the, the story, the plot, but y you can read that in the back of the books. So I, I don't feel like I'm giving anything away. His son dies on like the first page or second page of the story. Um, <clears throat> this guy's desperate for an heir for um, many reasons of which you will come to find out. And he tries to divorce his wife and get with this princess that he was about to be marrying off to his son. Uh, from there, this this tale takes so many twists and turns. It's got a little bit of the supernatural in it, uh, but it doesn't really rely on the supernatural. Um, how should I say? It doesn't get too involved in the plot. The plot would still work without um, the, the supernatural parts, so it's not like too fantastical. Um, yeah, it's quite dramatic, and um, it's just a fun gothic uh themed novel that I, I will definitely read again at, at some point um it didn't stand up to the monk in my opinion uh by matthew lewis i much preferred that novel uh what's another gothic novel i really like maybe um oh what's the actual name of it victor hugo um not notre dame i think is i think the title is just notre dame I get it confused with the Disney movie, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is quite different from the novel, but that uh, is one of my favorite novels that I've ever read. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that didn't quite live up to these two, but this was the first, apparently, and a lot of, it laid a lot of the groundwork, and you could say that um, those other two novels, along with uh, other Gothic novels, um, have borrowed a, a little bit from this so <clears throat> this is the og um yeah let me know if anyone else has read this book what they thought of it if they liked it if they didn't why and um if i'm if i'm overlooking anything major i know i didn't actually get that much into the the book itself but um yeah i i, I really enjoyed it overall um I think that's it. So, The Castle of Otranto would recommend.